Good morning, chemistry students. Today we are going to be uh, calculating some stoichiometric problems and using volume, molecules, mass, and um, just working through them together to hopefully help you understand uh, a little bit more about stoichiometry and how to calculate uh, these problems. Uh, these are the problems, uh, example problems in your book on page 360, uh, 361, 364, 365 and 366. So we're in section two talking um, about the mole ratios and how to use them in stoichiometric calculation. Okay, so let's get started with the first one. Um, this first one is talking about moles um, of a product. So we're not going to be using molar mass. We're not going to be using 6.02. We're just going to be using um, the moles uh, from a balanced chemical equation. So those mole ratios that we talked about in the last video. Okay, so this first one is talking about how many moles of ammonia are produced when you have 0.6 moles of nitrogen uh, with hydrogen. So uh, we know that our balanced chemical equation is going to be um, N2, okay, because it's a diatomic molecule, which is a gas plus H2 gas. And this is the example I believe I used in the other one as well, produces ammonia, which is NH3, okay as a gas and we just want to know how many moles so we got to balance this one first so we put a three here and a two here now we're balanced and so the mole ratios if we are starting out our given number is this nitrogen so I always like to just write the amount of um, right on top here of this so I know I have this much and where we're going is this guy so I know that I'm gonna to have to use a mole ratio using this and this so I go ahead and write my given number 0.6 moles, make sure you're using units of N2 gas, and draw an X in the line. We know on the bottom we have to have this moles of N2, okay? This is what has to go on bottom so we can cancel it out. Now even more important than it was last chapter to write out those units because now we're going to be changing between moles. Now there's not just one mole of one um, element. There's going to be multiple ones, okay? And uh, since there are only there's just nothing out here we would assume this is a one and we need to go over here because we're trying to find moles of this one so now moles of n2 cancels out and we're just going to use two moles right here using this mole ratio of oops, moles of nh3 okay so now we are left with moles of nh3 which that is what they're asking for they're saying how many moles of ammonia and that's what we have now is moles of ammonia. Okay, so it's 0.6 times 2. That's going to give us 1.2 moles of ammonia. Okay, now if they would have asked for hydrogen, then we could have done the same thing. Okay, so this is a, a different problem here. So let's just say if we had 0.6 moles of N2. We could have done the same exact thing and calculated moles of hydrogen just by using um, the other conversion factor. So moles of N2 and then we would use three moles of H2 on top. This would be uh, uh, 6 times, 0.6 times 3 would give us 1.8 moles of H2 gas. Okay, So these are pretty easy. It's just one step using the mole ratios. Okay, so let's go into something a little bit more difficult, talking about uh, the mass. Okay, so this one says calculate the number of grams of ammonia, so we're still using that NH3. Okay, remember ammonium was NH4 with a positive charge, uh, polyatomic ion. So you can always remember ammonia is just drop down one. Um, so it says produced, uh, ammonia is produced in a reaction of 0.54 grams of hydrogen, so we're still using this same equation. So we know we're going to need a 3 out there because they always have to be balanced. You don't have any more ratios if you don't have a balanced chemical equation. Okay. So we have our balanced chemical equation. So I write the 0.4 grams of hydrogen right here. So I'll write it down here since I didn't leave myself enough room at top. Grams of hydrogen. Okay, And it's saying that we have an excess. Now we're going to get more into this in the third section the excess meaning that there's more nitrogen than there is hydrogen and so we're going to have leftover hydrogen at the end of our um, experiment but we don't have to worry about that right now 
So let's go ahead and write out um, our grams of hydrogen. Okay, and we know grams of hydrogen is going to have to be on bottom. Now, when we calculate this, you have to make sure that you use um, two hydrogens here because it's H2. Okay, so um, we would take the 1.00795 plus 1.00795. Okay, and so that's going to give us uh, right around 2.1. Okay, and um, now on top of that, the only things that can go on top of molar mass, since we use the periodic table, we use one mole of H2. Now, notice there's three moles up here, okay? But in order for it to be equal to molar mass, it has to be one, just like in last chapter, okay? We can't get confused with the mole ratios with molar mass or molecules or the liters, okay? So now we'll draw another X in a line because we are looking for the number of grams of ammonia. So this is our question mark here in grams, okay? We're looking for mass. So now we're going to have um, one, not necessarily one, I suppose. Um, we're going to go here, so we're going to use three moles of H2, okay? I'm going to use this mole ratio because now I have to get to this. And the only way to move from one compound to another compound is using a mole ratio, okay? So it, it kind of is, is habit to write a one because that's what we did last chapter, but you have to use a three here, and then we would use the two moles of NH3 on top. Now we just have to make this into grams. So then we need one mole of NH3 here, and we would find the molar mass there, which is 14 plus three, so it's going to be 17.5. 0, 3 grams, okay, and let's go ahead and calculate this, it would be 5.4 divided by 2.01 times 2 divided by 3 times 17.03, and that is going to give us 31 grams, okay, and we only need two sig figs, so this would be um, 31 grams of NH3. Okay. So here we go from grams to mole. Here we go from mole of one compound to mole of another compound. And here we go from moles to grams again because we were looking for mass. Okay. And we could have also went to grams of nitrogen by just using instead of uh, using this conversion factor, using one mole of nitrogen over three moles of hydrogen. Okay, so these um, mole ratios really help us move through um, calculations. Okay, next one is um, molecules of a product. So as soon as you see that word molecules, this number should pop in your head. And if it doesn't still, then you need to remember it. Okay, so here we're going to be using this as molecules. Okay, and this question says how many molecules of oxygen are produced when there are 29.2 grams of water um, that's decomposed. Okay, so we're going to start out with water and as a liquid, and we're going to decompose it. And this means by electricity, electrolysis. So we're going to get H2 gas plus O2 gas. Okay? And I actually have one of these machines in the back of the room, but it doesn't work right now. Um, so now we need to balance this. So we need, um, let's see, we have two oxygens over here. We're obviously going to need a two here and a two here. Okay, so you can see already our mole ratios are going to be a two to two and a two to one and a two to one ratio there. All right, so let's go ahead and calculate this one. Um, our given number is grams of water. Make sure you write that whole thing out. So you write 29.2. I'm going to write 29.2 grams of water right here. And we want to know molecules of oxygen produced, okay? And we're looking here for molecules. And this just helps you stay organized, okay? They're, they're not hard calculations. We're just multiplying and dividing, but you have to know where you're going and what conversion factors you need to use. Okay, so make sure you write out grams of H2O. If you don't do that, 
you're going to be pretty lost. Okay, so we know grams of H2O has to go on bottom. I know that's 18.01, I think. Um, and then on top of that, we just do one mole of H2O, just like we did last chapter. Now, we have to use this. So we use two moles of H2O, and since we're going to oxygen, we need to use the mole ratio from water to oxygen, and there's only one here. So there's one mole of O2, and go again, and we'll just use one mole of O2 over 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. Okay. All right. So um, if we add that up, we get uh, 29. Or not add. I guess multiply. Point. Oh, 29 point uh, two. And we divide that by 18.01. And then we would divide that by two. And then we multiply by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And we get 4.88 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of oxygen. Okay? So that is exactly how many molecules of O2 would be in a sample of that much water. It's kind of kind of cool. Okay. Uh, one more after this. We just have two left here. Volume to volume calculation. So this is if you have a volume of oxygen and you want to know how many liters of um, a different one that they have. So it says we have nitrogen monoxide. So nitrogen and oxide and oxygen gas. Okay, so we know that's O2. Okay. And they they form to uh, make the brown gas nitrogen dioxide. Uh, and dioxide goes right here. And it says which one contributes to the photochemical smog. So this is what smog is right here. And how many liters of nitrogen dioxide are produced when 34 liters of oxygen react? So we need 34 liters of oxygen. And it wants to know how many liters of nitrogen. So we're going from liters to liters, or volume to volume, okay? So to do this, um, it's saying that there's an excess of nitrogen um, monoxide, and there's always STP, so standard temperature and pressure, because this wouldn't work. We couldn't use this um, conversion if it wasn't standard temperature and pressure. Okay, so now we're just going to write out our given number, which is 34 liters of oxygen, X in a line. We're going to put liters of O2 on bottom. Okay, the only number that goes with liters is 22.4. You know that one mole goes on top. Make sure you're writing oxygen. So now we know, oops, I didn't uh, balance my chemical equation here. So I better do that. Put a two there, two, two more oxygens. And we put a two there. So now we have four oxygens, four oxygens, two nitrogens. Okay. Almost didn't have a mole ratio. Okay, so now we know there's just one mole of oxygen. And we are going to NO2. So we need to use this guy. Two moles of NO2. And it wants us to go to liters. So now we have to do one more step. And do one mole of NO2. And do the 22.4 liters um, again. Okay. So it's almost like these two cancel out because they're on top and bottom. So it's just 34 times 2, and that gives us 68 liters of you know, 2. Okay? So those are pretty easy. So the last one deals with um, if we're looking for the volume of gas needed. So again, uh, we could use the 22.4, but showing you in that last one, you can almost assume since 22.4 is going to cancel out, we can almost eliminate that step. So how many milliliters of oxygen is needed to produce uh, 20.4 milliliters of sulfur trioxide? So our equation is SO2 gas plus O2 gas 
and we're going to get uh, sulfur trioxide here, gas. Yes. 